Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is hypnotize. Let's take a moment and review some of the definitions or the ways that we use this verb. The first way you might encounter this verb hypnotize means to produce a state of consciousness in which a person loses the power of voluntary action. So their ability to kind of control, make decisions and do things. And it's instead, they become highly responsive to either suggestion or direction. So with this first definition, uh, perhaps you've seen this uh, at a live show, maybe you've seen videos on YouTube where um, an individual who specializes in certain techniques kind of puts people in this calm state. And then they might say something like, when you hear the color purple or the word purple, you're going to bark like a dog. And um, again, many times this is done for entertainment. They will take people kind of out of this, this state and then they'll do things. They'll use the word purple and the person will bark and people are like, oh, it's hilarious, right? Um, but that is what that first definition is connected to. Related to that, a second definition uh, or a second way to use this verb is to capture the whole of t attention of someone. So this second definition might be a little similar to fascinate, another verb, but it's uh, many times people are, are using this second definition because it reminds them of the first thing. So it's sort of like, I can only see this one thing, or I'm so focused on this one thing, I'm not paying attention to other things. I'm not able to maybe hear or notice other things. For now, you should know that hypnotize is a regular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, you'll notice we have a verb that ends in the pattern vowel consonant E. That means we're going to drop the E before adding a suffix that starts with a vowel letter. So we're going to add our ing. That forms hypnotizing. The past tense and the participle forms of our verb can be made by just adding D since this verb already ends in an E. Now our base verb, hypnotize, z, can you hear it? It ends with a voice sound. That, that Z sound is voiced in English. This means the ED ending is just going to make a D sound, and I'm not adding an extra syllable when I say it. So the past tense and the participle forms should sound like this. Hypnotized. Hypnotized. Now you might be happy to know no additional phrasal verbs that we need to study or discuss today. So instead, let's do a little verb tense review with our verb of the day. Today we're going to review the simple past tense and the simple present. Let's start with the past tense. We use the simple past tense to talk about completed actions that occurred at a known point in the past. Now, not every sentence in English is going to have a time signal telling us that we know when this action happened. Instead, it's more commonly used um, or it's implied as part of a conversation or a longer passage, right? If you ask me what I did yesterday, right, I would use the, the simple past tense, right? Because I understand, right? We're talking about a known point in the past. And as I described to you what I did yesterday, I'm not going to continue to say, well, yesterday this, yesterday that, right? It's understood. The nice thing about making sentences in the simple past tense is that our structure stays the same no matter what our subject is. So in the affirmative, you're going to start with your subject, Right? And then you're going to use that ED form of the verb. Let's take a look at an example of this. The documentary tells the story of how a high school principal hypnotized students before their deaths. Right? Well, it sounds a little creepy, uh, but that was a description of a particular film. And so uh, while it might not be obvious in this sentence, we don't have a time signal, this story is going to tell us kind of the dates and the events when this happened. Okay? And this is, I think, uh, really tying back to that first 
uh, definition of the verb. Now let's talk about making negative simple past tense sentences. To do that, start with your subject, use did not, and then use the base verb. So notice, no ed here in the negative. An example of this. The trainer didn't hypnotize the horses, but he knew where to stand and how to communicate to get their full attention. Again, I borrowed uh, this sentence from another story, uh, telling the uh, story of somebody who was apparently very, very skilled in getting horses to uh, follow certain commands, do certain things. And so some people are like, wow, he must hypnotize them, right? Have kind of like control of their mind. Um, and of course, the story is saying, no, 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 that's not what he did. And of course, it goes on to explain in greater detail how he could get them to listen and follow his direction. Finally, let's look at making a yes or no question in the simple past tense. To do this, start with did, then you're going to have your subject, and then the base verb. Again, notice we're not using the ed form of the verb in our yes or no question. The only time I'm using that ed form of the verb is in the affirmative. Okay. Remember that when you're writing and speaking. So let's look at the example here. Did he successfully hypnotize multiple people from the crowd at the show? So again, back to that first definition, we're maybe talking about a particular person that does this for entertainment. Now let's move on to the simple present. We use this verb tense to talk about our habits and our routines. These are actions that repeat again and again at a pretty common frequency. So it might be something that happens every day. It might be something that happens one time a month or maybe three or four times a year. But you kind of have that pattern or that habit. We'll also use it with facts as well. In the simple present, we have to pay attention to our subject. Okay? So if our subject is I, you, we, or they, just use the base verb. But if the subject is he, she, or it, you want to add an S to the end of the verb. You can notice that in my example here. The sight of cats on TV hypnotizes their pet cat every time. Okay. This sentence would most closely tie back to the second definition of the verb. And there might be some people looking at this and going, wait a minute. Hey, Katie, I see an S on the end of cats. Don't we have a plural? Isn't that like they? That's not our subject here. The subject is the sight, right? So kind of that scene. That's what's being discussed uh, in that particular sentence. Okay, So that's our subject. The sight hypnotizes their pet cat, right? So kind of means the cat just freezes. Whenever the other cats are on the screen, it's got its full attention. Now let's talk about making negative sentences in the simple present. To do this, you want to start with your subject, right? We're paying attention to that subject. If the subject is I, you, we, or they, use do not and then the base verb. But if your subject is he, she, or it, use does not and then the base verb. You will hear and see people use the contraction forms. So do not can be combined to the contraction don't, and does not can be combined into the contraction doesn't. That's actually used in my example here. That movie doesn't hypnotize anyone with its boring story. So there we are, back to that second, right? This movie is not very interesting. It's not fascinating, right? Capturing people's intention. Now, let's look at making a yes or no question in the simple present. To do this, start with do or does, then you're going to have your subject, and then the base verb. Again, notice here the only time I'm adding an S to the end of the verb is in the affirmative or with positive sentences when the subject is he, she, or it. Here's my last example. Does your phone hypnotize you? So back to that second definition, we're talking about kind of fascinating you, getting all of your attention. Now, let's take a moment and talk about some words that are related to our verb hypnotize. 
The first word we're going to discuss today is the noun form of this word. We have a spelling change. You'll notice a slight difference in the pronunciation as well. Hypnosis. Hypnosis. So the stress is really what's changing here. So maybe you've noticed as, I've, as I have said, hypnotize. Hypnotize. I'm stressing that first syllable, the H-Y-P, that, that part. Now with the noun, hypnosis. Now I'm stressing the second syllable in that word. So this noun, again, is the induction or the beginning of a state of consciousness in which a person loses their ability to voluntarily do things. And again, they become responsive or they respond to suggestion and direction. So here's uh, an example of this noun in a sentence. Can hypnosis boost people's creativity and focus? So sometimes um, this uh, power uh, or, or special state of consciousness uh, is used to treat different issues. Um, some people believe this could have a positive effect. Uh, I have not read the research, so I'm not suggesting you try this. Okay. Um, another noun um, you might encounter is hypnotism. Hypnotism. And so this would be the study or the practice of hypnosis. So back to that other nouns definition. So an example of this. Some people dealing with addictions have tried hypnotism to end their addictions. So true, again, I don't know if the science fully supports this, and I'm not suggesting anybody try this, um, but it's good to be aware of, of how things get used. So that idea of can, can someone convince me to, for example, stop smoking? Right. Um, for some people, they're really, really interested in, in ending that. Um, and so they're, they're going to try like anything that could possibly work. Another noun you might encounter is hypnotist. This is a person who carries out hypnosis. And it could be, again, for medical reasons. Sometimes this, this is used more in, in a medical way, or it could be referring to someone who's doing this for entertainment purposes. Um, so an example of this in a sentence, the company hired a hypnotist for the holiday parties entertainment, right? So clearly this is for fun. They are not providing medical treatment. One last word for us today, it's the adjective hypnotic, hypnotic. So this is, of course, connected to our definition here of of producing or relating to hypnosis. That's one way to use the adjective. So an example of this, how long has she been in the hypnotic state? Okay, so again, we're kind of maybe someone's receiving medical treatment, right? But we kind of want to know how long have they been under this direction or the, under the power of suggestion. Now, a second way you might use that adjective is to describe medicine that induces sleep or that causes someone to become very sleepy, tired, or may just call them to cause them to fall asleep. An example of this, the report includes a comparative study with the hypnotic drug diazepam. So here, this adjective is describing the noun drug. And this is a, a, a medical a, a type of medicine or medication, not an illegal substance. And it's clearly something that may cause people to fall asleep. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day.